not sure what else you can say about Russ, but it seemed like he was having a kind of quiet night and just kind of flipped the switch in the last about 2.30. Um, you know, what kind of kicked in at that moment? Uh, winning time. Guy's a big time, big time player, big time moments. He's been through a lot of them and had a lot of success through them. One thing I'm not worried the last minutes of games with him, he makes, he makes plays. Uh, got a big, got a big rebound, got some big, big buckets. Uh, but give the, give them credit. They, they were, they were aggressive throughout the game. They started that third quarter. We couldn't get a, we couldn't get a stop, but we made enough plays in that fourth quarter uh, to get the win. So that's, you know, that's all that, that's all that counts. Thank you. You're welcome. Chase. Scott, eight straight games. This is the longest win streak uh, the franchise has had in 20 years, and you're one away from tying the franchise record. Just what, what is your reaction to, to that, that, that you guys are playing so well that you're making history? Well, we just, we're playing together. We're playing hard and for one another. And that's, that's usually, uh, if you got the talent, that's usually a pretty good recipe for success. And that's what we've been doing. I've been saying it, you know, we've, we, we have enough guys healthy to get on some, get on a little consistent uh, schedule. And I think that's helped. You know, obviously we've had some, some fortunate plays down the stretch of some of these games, uh, but that's what winning players do. And it starts with Brad and Russell and, and everybody follows when you have your two best players committed and locked in uh, you have, you have, uh, the best chance of having success. And you know, we got some players out, but we got some players who are gaining some experience. And I thought they've had some experience throughout the year, kind of helped them this time around. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously eight, eight games in a row is good. I don't know if I would have expected it, you know, a while back, but we've been playing pretty good basketball since that road trip. And uh, Brad obviously, um, you know, scored really well against Lou Dort. And then tonight he was face guarded, double teamed. Is he kind of back into that groove where he can counter pretty much any defense a team throws at him? Well, he, he's seen it all. I mean, last year he didn't have a, another high level player on the court. So he's seen triple teams last year. He doesn't see it as much now. Uh, you know, when, when DB's knocking shots down, when Russell's on the floor, our bigs, you know, they're, they're unsung heroes and they, they, they just, they play the right way. And they, they just, they make timely plays, but their screen setting is really high level. And Gaff is, you know, for a young player, he's getting pretty good at that. I know our coaches are teaching him some of the things, but he came in pretty good. They've taught him some good things, uh, his, you know, growing up, but I, I love the way our big set screens, they can read things and Russell makes good passes on time. And Brad's obviously is great at setting up, and that's gotten so much better over the last five years. He's he's impossible to stop. I mean, he's he's not going to make every shot, and he's going to have off games. But there's a lot of times when he has a uh, when he misses a shot is because he missed it. It's not because of the defense. Fred, hey Scott. Um, speaking, speaking of Brad, do you, do you know what happened with him on, on that play near the very end in the layup? No, nah, I think, I think he, I don't know this, but one of our coaches said he might've kicked himself. So I don't know. I obviously, I haven't looked at it, uh, but he was walking fine coming in after, but you know, hope we hope for the best, you know, we had some few guys get banged up tonight and, you know, don't know what Rui's situation is tomorrow, but. Um, like always, we, I'll check in with our guys after the game or performance staff and then see how they feel tomorrow and then makes, make some decisions that's best for all of our players. And, and similarly, do you know what happened with Robin? Um, yeah, I think they, they had an extra, um, coat of paint and he tripped over it. The key, the key, they recoded the key red. No, nah, he's, he's fine. He's, I mean, he's tough and he loves to play. That's what I love about Rolo. He loves to play. I've been, I've been cut from, for a lot of reasons. And a lot of them are for, because they're 
teams that are guys were more talented, but a lot of times they were big. And some of those big guys don't really like to play. But we got three bigs that love to play, and I like that about them all. But Rolo, he's fun to coach and he has a great sense of humor. And he 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 said one time during the game, something happened. He's and I said, you got pushed around. He said, yeah, I don't, I, you can tell I don't lift much weights. And you're looking at his biceps. I have to agree with him. And, and Scott, you you were always very positive with us, independent of what your guys' record was. Did you feel like there was ever a point where you had to be overly positive to keep spirits up so that you could get to a streak like this? Or, or did you feel like the locker room was kind of always where you wanted it in that respect? No, I mean, it was, trust me, when we were, I think we're, I, uh, I don't know exactly. I think we're 15 under 500. And I think we lost three or four in a row. And some of them weren't close. And I know we had a lot of things going on. And we had a lot of firepower that wasn't playing. The art of coaching with myself and all of our coaches to keep our guys engaged and locked in. We got a good group of guys. That's That helps. If we had a bunch of... A bunch of um, how do I, bunch of not very nice guys. Um, it wouldn't be the same, but we got guys that are, they, they want to do well and they want to play well and they, and they care and that happens, but there's no question. This season has been a mental test for all of us. I haven't, I had to deal with things I've never ever thought I would have to deal with as a coach, just from a, like a coaching standpoint, from a personal life standpoint. I mean, it's not easy being away from people that you, you care about and our players feel the same way, but we all are. I mean, even we're even, even away from you guys, you know, I, I feel horrible about that. Matt. I don't get to listen to you guys laugh at my bad sense of humor. Oh, you can see us smiling over Zoom. Um, Scott, I'm just curious, with this being the longest win streak in 20 years, I mean, when you look back at what you were doing 20 years ago, just where kind of were you? I think you were a player coach in the ABA. Is that right? Or what were you kind of doing 20 years 20 ago? 20 years ago, so 2001, I think I was in the ABA. <laughs> Dang, is it that funny? No, no, no. I, don't think. Uh, I think I was doing a little bit of player coaching with Paul Westhead and until he had his first training camp practice and it was like a track meet. And I said, I don't know about the playing part. I just want to get into coaching. And I faked the hamstring injury and I coached the rest of the year. Cause that, that offense he has, that's for young kids. And I was a retired NBA player at that time, but yeah, it's been a while. Eight, eight is, you know, eight is not enough. We want to keep, we want to keep going. We got a tough game tomorrow night against, uh, against San Antonio. But you know, eight wins is great. But we want to keep we want to keep it going. It's not going to be easy. But we live we live to uh, to keep the streak going for one more night. The the battle you had tonight with with Jared Allen, both you guys had really good games. Just kind of how would you describe the the back and forth between you guys all night? Um, I mean, you know, just a real good game on both ends. You know, he he's great at what he does, and I mean, trying to be as great as I can be at what I do. And it was just you know the battle of the best tonight. You know, he came down and he was being dominant in every area and every aspect, especially on the defensive end and on the offensive end as well. Um, you know, I just had to step up to the plate and just really accept the challenge because, I mean, Jared Allen, he's an elite athlete. So I had to kind of step up my physicality and my athleticism, basically everything to just, you know, withstand and playing a guy like him. I mean, he's a great player. And the Wizards are now 10-1 uh, and one in games that you play. Um, what can you say about how things have clicked? And, and you know, coming from a an organization that was was trying to build something in Chicago to all of a sudden immediately winning with this team. What's that been like? Uh, I mean, you know, we just playing and having fun right now. Um, you know, just coming in and having as much energy as I possibly can, you know, keeping guys up and whatnot. We just, you know, one big happy family at this point, you know, trying to stay together and trying to stay locked in as a team to where we can withstand late game situations like we just did tonight. You know, just coming out, playing hard playing together and having each other's backs. That's the main thing. It's basically communicating with each other on the defensive end, doing everything we can to succeed on the offensive end as well. So we're just playing as a team at this point. Matt? Hey, Daniel. Uh, this is the Wizards' longest winning streak in 20 years. I, I know you're 22, so 
Do you have any memory of Michael Jordan playing for the Wizards or anything like that? I mean, either watching him just on highlights or anything like that? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't actually. Um, wait, no, I do have a faint memory of it. You know, I've seen like certain plays and whatnot of him, you know, being with the Wizards. I just had to, I just like really don't, you know, fully remember like, you know, how long he was with them. But I, you know, I have a faint memory of him being with, you know, the Wizards and stuff. So yeah, I got got a good memory of it. You know, I had to kind of think back. You know, <laughs> and then uh, just what do you make of kind of the history of it all? Of that this is the longest win streak in twenty years. Uh, I mean, you know, we just we're just coming out of playing. I would say, you know, the history with it. I mean, I really can't. I really can't even explain it because I mean, we're just coming out of playing basketball. We're just doing the things that we want to do to basically really just make this playoff run, make this playoff berth that we want to really have. And just playing like, you know, teams like how Michael Jordan was playing with the Wizards and whatnot, they had that winning streak. We're just basically trying to do the same thing, come out and play basketball every night, have energy, do everything the right way that helps us come out on top with a win. Thank you. Brad? Hey, Daniel. How hey, you doing? Good. Um, I'm curious because you kind of came to the team when things were obviously so much lower than they are now. Have mm -hmm. And you have a different perspective because you came up of the year. Have you, like, have you noticed a change in um, attitude or culture or anything like that since you guys got there just with all the winning that you guys have done? How, how would you say that that's evolved over the last month? Um. I mean, I love the atmosphere here. When I got here, you know, I was walking with open hands, open arms, however you want to put it. Um, but just really, I feel like everything is the same. We just, you know, doing it at a, I would say, better stint than what it was being done before I even got here. You know, just coming in and having energy, just being that one loud guy. You know, it, change, it changes a lot. I wouldn't say everything has changed because of me. That's me being selfish because, you know, guys change on their own. You know, guys come in and they do their work and they perfect their craft to where they can be able to come out on the floor and dominate every night. So, I mean, I wouldn't say it's changed. Um, you know, guys are guys are just coming in and just, you know, working their butts off to be able to come out and just be able to play the game of basketball, you know? Cool. Thanks, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Jay Rochelle. Hey, Daniel, great win tonight. Um, what do you make of, you know, the bench coming in? You guys out, were able to outscore their bench 51 one points to 14 points with so many different lineups. You know, what is it that the bench players or people coming off the bench kind of say to kind of keep you guys, you know, always ready to just go in there and, you know, fully assert yourself where needed? Uh, just basically having a mindset of staying ready. You know, you never know when your number's called, whether you're playing consecutive minutes or if you're not playing consecutive minutes. Your number's always going to be called at some point in time. Um, just basically coming out with the mindset to just, you know, play and do everything that the guys that are out there doing, do it better, or just bring energy off the bench, or, you know, just come in and, you know, go out there like their best ball handler out on the floor. Just any aspect of just being ready, just having the mindset of just coming out with energy and being ready, being able to talk on defense, being able to be good on offense, certain things like that. Um, so the bench, we, you know, really just did our thing tonight, you know, just coming off the bench, having energy, you know, not really just, you know, kind of like not being ready, just, you know, being ready to just come out and dominate on the floor. Christos. Hello, Daniel. I'd like to ask you, tonight's game for you is, was the best game uh, for you as a wizard? Oh, so repeat that question. Was that game against uh, the Cavaliers tonight as your best game uh, with uh, the wizard uniform? Oh, um... I don't know. I mean, you know, I didn't have a couple of good games here. I would say it's my best. I mean, I just came out and I had to really kind of like lock in at the last in the last quarter of the time that I got subbed in after um, Robin kind of got hurt um, on the other end of the floor. Just basically just really coming in and just locking in. Finally, you know, it was a, it was a pretty long game for me. It was a lot of stuff that wasn't going my way and I was trying my best not to get aggravated. But this being my best game, I would say probably not. I think my best game was when we played Golden State because that was my first triple double. I mean, not triple double. Jesus Christ! Oh my goodness, <laughs> that was my first double double. <laughs> so, um, you know, I would say that would <laughs> kind of be my best game because of that. You know, I've always been close to having a double double, but I just never like really just pushed myself to the limit to be able to get that last rebound or that last bucket. 
but that night I got it. So I would say that was my best game, but tonight was one of my better games for sure. Because as you can see, last game we played OKC, okay, I mean, I really wasn't as good as I, as you guys see me on the floor. Um, but yeah. And what kind of boost for you as a team is uh, the eight straight, uh, eight straight wins? Oh, um, I mean, it's a big boost, you know, but I mean, we can't really just let that kind of like get to us right now. You know, we can celebrate that tonight, you know, for sure. We got 10 wins in a row, but we got to come out tomorrow to be ready to play the Spurs because I mean, that's a great team too. You know, these are NBA teams. You can't just come out and be like, oh, we got 10 wins. It's going to be an easy game. No, it's not. You know, we got to come out every day fight. You know, it's good to have, it's good to have this streak going for sure, but we got to have the mindset to lock in and keep it rolling. Calf was a, I came on my calf was very tight. I felt like my shin was hurting too. My whole left leg was in pain. Uh, when I was on the ground, but you know, kind of adrenaline calmed down a little bit. It's still a little tight now, but uh, I feel better. I should be, I'll see how I feel in the morning. And uh, I'm sure you've heard by now, but you know, eight straight for you guys. Uh, it's the first time in 20 years, Michael Jordan's on the team. Uh, right. you're, you're one win away from uh, tying the franchise record. Just what, what's it like to be a part of this right now? Oh, it's a blessing, uh, it's an honor for sure. But you know, we don't, pat ourselves on the back or anything like that because we still still got a work cut out. Uh, tonight was probably out of all of our last eight or nine was probably one of our not so good nights. And granted, we, we duped it out and won, but we had a lot of mental lapses and, and defensive lapses that we shouldn't have had tonight. And we damn sure can have them tomorrow if we, you know, against a good team like the Spurs. So, uh, you know, it, it means a lot to be, you know, a part of history and, and to be in this position. Uh, but, you know, looking in hindsight and looking ahead of what we're trying to accomplish, we still got we still got a lot of things to improve on in a uh, short amount of time. Brad. Brad, I know I know you guys were all very positive to us really throughout the season, independent of what your record was. Looking back on it. Now, though, is is the locker room, is the spirit of the team in any different condition now than it was in, say, February or March or even heading into April? Yeah, I mean, we're happy we're winning. I mean, we're, it's a lot different than, than being uh, being mad. Uh, we're frustrated and guys just wanting to guys just wanting to do well. I remember, I always remember myself saying it. Like, it's not like we have guys who are just out here trying to do their own thing or trying to figure it out on our own. Like, you know, we collectively are frustrated. We were collectively wanting to be better. We collectively want to contribute to winning. And, uh, you know, like I always continue to preach, it's starting to just click for us and come full circle. So, uh, you know, it's a testament to us just sticking it out and staying true to who we are, uh, finding our identity throughout the year and, and staying with it. And what, what would you say is the most important part of your handle? The, I should say the improvement in your handle over the last five years or so. My confidence, uh, like I can sit here, Fred. I'm I don't do ball handling drills. I don't I don't sit here and you know work with the tennis ball, dribble two balls. I do none of that. Like I work on actual moves I'm going to do in the game. And honestly, I try a lot of shit that <laughs> works sometimes. Uh, God bless me with some talent that you know. I, sometimes I just go out and do stuff and it works. But uh, more than likely, it's just. It's just my confidence. I, I really believe nobody can take the ball. I believe I can get anywhere I want to, and that's just playing the game, getting reps at it, and, and and knowing what kind of shots you want and how you want to create for your team, you know, and just kind of finding ways to kind of manipulate the game. And I'm starting to starting to do that. Matt. Hey, Brad. Following up on the 20 years thing, when you were a kid, do, do you remember Jordan playing on the Wizards? Like, do you have actual memories of that? The only Jordan memory I have with him on the Wizards is when he blocked a shot with two hands and just grabbed it off the glass. That's the only memory I have with him on the Wizards. I so, hated it. They came back and played because I always wanted him to be, no offense, DC, I always wanted him to be a bull for life. But and then, so what do you just kind of make of, like, I know you call it special, but like what you guys have been able to do. Or, I guess do you appreciate the, the the length of it all. I mean, you were eight years old when you know twenty years ago. Uh yes and no, because I've been here nine years now. And we haven't put a streak like that together. So you know, in that in that 
realm. I'm a little frustrated by that because we've had some really good teams here. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's just staying with it and seeing where we are now versus the beginning of the year. A lot of teams basically counted us out and said we wouldn't be too much of nothing. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it means even much more to, to know we, we're duping it out and, and getting it done this way. Also, just following up on the, the block thing real quick, uh, were you in like your living room at home or were, were kind of where you do you remember? I couldn't even tell you if I wanted to. I don't even know what year that was. I mean, you said it was 20 years ago, so I obviously do the math. But, uh, I, mm -mm, I couldn't tell you. No. I just, I was like, that's crazy. Still has bounce. So. <laughs> Kelsey. Hey, Brad. Um, this is a question about Darius Garland. Um, just being in this second year and your re your relationship with him. Um, how have you just seen him grow this year? I know this is the first game that you guys played against the Cavs, but just what have you seen from him just growing in this league so far? Well, I've had the pleasure of, of coaching him in AAU when he was 15, 15 through 17. And, uh, you know, I always say ever since I told him in, I told him he was a pro then. And, and you know, it's amazing now to play against him and to see his growth. And uh, his second year is just all about confidence and just being comfortable. You know, I always told him his first year is just a year about learning. Uh, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what your marketing in the league is going to be. Um, and he's done that. He's going to be a tremendous guard in this league for many of years. I'm a huge fan of him. Uh, and he's starting to figure it out. You know, his change, I love his change of pace. I think he has one of the best change of pace games, you know, probably in the league. And uh, he's always in attack mode. You know, he's a, he's a true point that can score and shoot it. Uh, you know, I'm always going to be a little biased, but he's, he's, uh, He's a, he's a special talent for sure. I'm excited to see his growth and, you know, he's in a tough situation, but, you know, he's confident in what he's doing and uh, he's helped that team make strides. So I'm definitely rooting for him. David? Brad, um, anytime anybody says they feel like they got kicked, you always, first thing you think about is Achilles. Have they ruled that out? Yes, 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 yes. Achilles is good. Okay. Uh, it was just my calf, and uh, appreciate that. That's a good question. Because, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah, no, everything is good. Uh, see how I feel in the morning. I'm able to move and walk. It feels calmed down a lot more after the game, so that's, that's a good sign. So. And also, what do you think is sustainable from this, from this run? Uh, honestly, I, I believe it was, it's our defense and our approach to the game. You know, we're, we're not getting tired of doing the same things that, you know, got us here, you know, and that's defending, that's toughness, uh, that's rebounding. You know, we tonight I think we had a lot of those lapses that we can't have, but, uh, you know, it just, it just shows our character and our maturity of just being able to close it out in the fourth. You know, at the beginning of the year, we probably wouldn't have been able to do that. Uh, and so it's, it's just, it's definitely us finding our identity. I don't know when we did, but, you know, once we started defending, you know, and getting out in transition and moving the ball and just really just having fun, honestly. Uh, I think that's when it all just kind of came full circle for us. And it's been working. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Thank you. Neil. Hey, Brad. Less about tonight's game, but more in just your season overall. I know you've done a lot of work on your core muscles, you know, coming into previous all season, coming into this year. Where have you felt that that's helped and improved your game? What aspects of your game, whether it's offense or defense, have you felt that it's helped you the most? Uh, just overall, uh, the overall game. I, I mean, that doesn't, there's nothing I do specifically that, you know, points to either end. It's just, to me, it's a matter of my balance and keeping my center of gravity where it needs to be. And uh, I'm big on balance. So, you know, core plays a big part in that as well. So, uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's very beneficial, uh, especially driving to the basket, being able to stop and go and cut and kind of maneuver in the air the way I do. So it's a lot of time. I don't even. It's a weird. I have never paid attention to when I use my core in the game, but uh, it's definitely important. So. Thanks, Brad. Hope you feel good tomorrow. Thank you. Christos. Hey, Brad, congratulations on the win. 
How, what kind of boost do you get from the Edge Red wins so far in the season? And do you think that with your performances and uh, your wins, you earned the respect of the whole of the whole league? Uh, I think the league is starting to pay attention to it. Um, I hope teams respect us when we play because we respect them. Uh, but I mean, we control what we can control, and we just go out and try to win. You know, that's our our biggest and main focus and goal. You know, we take it a day at a time. Like I said before, we play every other day. So our rest days, we focus on getting rest, recovery, you know, getting better that day if that's if that's where our mind is. Uh, but if not, you know, we, we get our rest and come in, come in ready to go for the next game. And so uh, they don't stop. And, you know, we're just, con- we're playing at a confident level right now. And, uh, you know, the win tends, you know, I don't know, however many we want, or nine or that, whatever it is, you know, it, it feels good. You know, we're confident. Hopefully the league notices, but we don't really care about that. And how good for your team is to see players like Daniel Gafford, Robin Lopez, and uh, the other bench players to make a step up? It's just all about taking advantage of opportunities, you know. Uh, you know, we, we traded for Gaff, and Gaff, I mean, they probably played two bigs in front of him, and he comes over here and, He's getting minutes that he probably hasn't had before, and he's making the most of them. You know, uh, Alex Lynn, same thing. Uh, Rolo, probably the same thing. And, you know, it's just a matter of our guys just taking advantage of opportunities they're given and uh, and going out and competing. You know, we need everybody, you know, every single night. And I think that's just been our biggest growth of mindset is that, you know, it's going to take all 15 for us to win, and we're going to do it on the defensive end uh, collectively. Last question to Jay Rochelle. Hey Brad, congrats, congrats on the win tonight. Um, you kind of alluded to what I was going to be asking you, but um, you guys' bench were, was able to outscore the Cavs tonight, fifty-one to fourteen. I know you mentioned, you know, identity and playing with a lot of confidence. How much do you contribute, you know, the bench's effort to, you know, things that are being said and the confidence you guys are playing with right now? You know, every every man essentially has to be ready no matter what position if they're coming off the bench or starting. Oh, for sure. Uh, everybody has to be ready. You know, granted, we don't want to see guys hurt. Um, but, you know, Denny's out and Rui's out. You know, those are two starters for us. So that's – those are a lot of minutes, you know, 20 to 30 minutes up for grabs, you know. Uh, and so that just gives Garrison and Hutch and Ish, Aul, uh, and then the bigs just more opportunities, you know, to be able to go out and, and compete. It's actually letting coach being able to – uh, kind of manipulate some lineups too, uh, figure out what we can use and what works, what doesn't. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's it's been it's been great. We need our bench. Uh, like I said, it's one through fifteen. We need everybody every single night. You know, Bertans is shooting a clip off the ball. Um, so it's it's we need everybody, and you know we're confident right now. We continue to uplift each other, and that's been the beauty of it.